Oh, this talk has a lot of code and you know would help you a lot if you are already using Redux. But even if you don't, some of the problems that I mentioned can really help you in evaluating your own decision. Okay, uh, how many of you have worked with Redux? Okay, good, yes. Uh, how many of you know about ES6 restructuring? Okay, cool. Uh, so, my slides are available over here. Redux DD, deep dive, bit.ly slash Redux DD. So, if at any point of time you want to go about, you should check them out over here. Uh, I'll just give, give a brief about what is destructuring. So, let's say you want to, ex you, you want to create a new object with the keys of state and you want to add these two new keys, P1 and P2. So, in ES6, you can do it quite easily by just Restructuring state that is using the three dots and then passing key one and key two. So this is just restructuring. Okay. So this is my agenda. I will be talking a brief on Redux basics. <coughs> then I will be talking about enhances and middleways. Then my problems, partial but failing solutions which I came up with, and then my proposed solution. Okay. So this is React's philosophy. Uh, you write up your render function which takes your props and state and it you convert that to VDOM. What React does is that it takes your VDOM and then it converts and it manages your DOM for you and any changes that you need to make. Uh, if any events happen, then you know, they call set state and you know, which modify your props and state or you know, props of your children uh, components. But as your app grows, it becomes really difficult to manage using just set state. So this is where Redux comes in. Facebook internally created Flux, but Redux is a much simpler solution to managing your data. What it gives you is that it gives you a single sort of truth, that is your state, that injects, that is provided to your components. Your component, when an event occurs, it dispatches an action and uh, Redux passes that action along with the current state to the reducers and it provides the new and it creates the new state, which then again is passed onto your component. So how do we do this? Uh, first we create the store using create store provided by Redux. Uh, and so the first parameter is the reducer and we pass that store as the prop to the provider component. What it does, it provides your, it sets your store into the React context and is available at any point of time into your, in your component tree. Uh, then to <laughs> extract properties out of your state, you use connect, also provided by React Redux. React Redux is sort of bindings for Redux to React. Uh, and you create a map state to props function. So, so you extract like, let's say I want the user from my store. So this is my map state to props function and you connect your component with the map state to props and then you have user in your component. Next up, so how do you dispatch an action? So you along with the other props, you also get an extra prop that is dispatched. You can pass in an object with a type key and anything, any extra that you want and this will dispatch an action for you. What Redux will do is that it will take that action and it will pass it, pass it to your reducer along with the current state. What you have to do is take the current state and modify it and return it. That's the Redux loop in brief. Uh, so now that we've seen that, it's time to level up. So first up, we have enhancers. Enhancers are basically wrappers around create store. So this is the signature. Uh, basically, they are functions which take in create store and return new create store. So let's write a simple enhancer which get, which logs on every get take. So it takes in create store and returns a new function. When it gets called, it will call create store with whatever props that get passed. <coughs> what will do? It will return the store, but it will also overwrite get state such that it will log that you know get state was called and then it will return what the original get state was returning. So how to use reducers? Uh, you can use uh, 
either you can enhance your create store directly <coughs> or you can pass it pass your enhancer as the last argument to create store function which was which we saw earlier was provided by data so how do you add multiple enhancers basically you chain them so enhancer 1 of enhancer 2 of create store you can either do this or you can compose them together or you can you know pass them as the last argument to create store uh, only one argument you can pass so you definitely need to compose them what is compose what does compose do so it takes in your multiple functions and it it converts them to something like this so the return value of third goes to second the return value of second goes to first and whatever first returns is what you get and something like this where one fish eats the other food for what is food for one is goes into the next so redux dev tools that we use is a classic enhance example of an enhancer uh, which allows you to track and modify your store uh, one enhancer that gets shipped with redux is mid apply middleware it's the only uh, enhancer that is shipped with redux what it does it does it takes a list of middlewares and it creates your enhancer for you uh, when you call that enhanced create store function it will call the original store and then uh, it will override the dispatch function uh, so it will override the dispatch function and every time your dispatch is called what it will do is that like it will create a sort of like a layer of meshes a layer of mosquito nets you can imagine for each dispatch all these middlewares will get called so that you know anything anything any uh, dependency that you want to inject you can inject them using middleware so over here the middleware is initialized with the new store and over here they are loaded with the next dispatch function so what are middlewares don't worry about the complex nesting so as i as you saw earlier here they are initialized with the store here they are initialized with the next dispatch function and then when any time when an action is called this uh, action, uh, an action is triggered uh, this function gets called and basically your middleware needs to call the next middleware in the chain so a classic example of middleware is redux thunk what it does is that it uh, it sort of sits in the middle and it checks if any action is a function what it will do is it will call that action with dispatch and get state as uh, its first and second arguments and it will cancel that action from going forward and if it's not a function it will just allow it to move forward uh, so example of redux thunk let's say you dispatch a function so over here this is a function and so the first, uh, first and the second arguments will be dispatch and get state and you can use them to you know whatever values you need from the state you can get them using get state so also what you can do is you can do non dom side effects so let's say for example you have the title your documents title also stored as a key in your store so what this middleware can do is that before the, it goes to the reducer, checks the title, and after the reducer is, uh, you know, after the store is reduced, it will get the new title. So it will compare that you know if it has changed, then I will modify document or title. And you know, this is you don't need to you know every time anywhere you don't need to you know modify document or title wherever in your component. You just need to modify it in your store, and your single source of truth, your store manages it everywhere. Why do I mention non-DOM side effects? Because DOM side effects are handled by React. Okay. Uh, so also one more example of middleware is that what we use is that uh, you can track, you know, user breadcrumbs or user flow. So we use Sentry, which is an error tracking library for JavaScript. And uh, at any time an action occurs, we send that to Sentry that you know, hey, this is what the uh, user flow has that has happened and anytime an error occurs it will show us that you know these actions had triggered uh, 
you know, now you can use this info to <coughs> debug, you know, recreate the flow of the user to re, uh, debug this particular error. Uh, how to use these middlewares? So, we saw earlier we have apply middleware provided by Redux. Basically, it will return an enhancer. So, we pass all our middlewares to it and we compose that with Redux DevTools. Okay, another example of a middleware is Redux Sagas, which you can attend Preeti's talk, which is right after this one. Uh, so, let's talk about some of my problems which I faced with the current Redux implementation, or it might be that they might be my superficial problems. Uh, it's, you know, it depends on person to person. So, <coughs> Uh, number one, typos. So I make a lot of typos and especially over here instead of dispatching do something amazing, I might dispatch do so am thing amazing. Uh, okay, so how do I solve this? Well, you can, you know, create an action list file where you can, you know, create a string and, you know, export it and in your action, you can import it and dispatch it and similarly, in your reducer, you can again check for it and you can create your switch case on it. You might say that, you know, hey, what if I make a spelling mistake over here? Well, uh, you can easily uh, config your webpack in such a way that, you know, it will check that every import that you're using is being exported by the file that is exporting it. So, webpack build will fail and I can track these errors quite easily. And I don't need to worry about typos, but my action list file will, you know, just keep on increasing and increasing. And every time I have to add an action, I have to maintain these three places, actions, reducers, and actions list. I'm just too lazy. I'm not going to maintain it in three places just to, you know, stop me from making typos. My next problem is types. Uh, so let's say you have, you want to watch an action drama movie. Uh, and you know its ID is A. Uh, you realize that you know it might be boring, and I also want to pass in a speed to this particular action. Now I have modified previously. It was payload was a number. Now it's an object. So I make the changes in my reducer F. accordingly. Previously it is taking ID as action dot payload directly. Now it takes it two variables from the object action dot payload. And you know, you've done this code, it goes into production, but let's say you forget it in a different location, that is, you forgot to update it from a number to an object. So what do you do next? Well, go with the flow. Flow is a static type checker by, Java, uh, by Facebook. Uh, it helps you to code smarter and code confidently in large code bases. And similarly, similar to Flow, there's TypeScript. So all of the examples that follow, uh, they are applicable to both Flow and TypeScript. So you can use whichever one you like. Uh, so I will now to stop me from making mistakes, I will you know define types. So I have defined type of drama action. I have created a type for action action. And then, you know, my action is either drama action or action action. So now, similarly, I will define types for my store. Now I have typings from uh, flow type Redux as well, which I can use to define my store, which is a Redux store of state and my, my state and my action, while my dispatch is a Redux dispatch of my action type. And then anywhere in your action, you can just mention that, you know, dispatch is of type dispatch and, you know, it will throw an error when drama action is the type and my payload is not matching the, you know, proper uh, shape that was mentioned in my types. So, but again, every time I modify the shape of a type, I have to maintain in three places that is in my actions, in my reducers, and in my action types. So this is too much, and I'm too lazy to do it in these things. This is something that I can, but I won't, and then, you know, someone from my team will come up, hey, 
I created this, you know, fallback action. Now we don't need to create action, uh, you know, types for our actions at all. You can just, you know, this fallback action covers everything. And that was not the point of it. We created types for our actions so that we can, you know, stop making bugs in production. Um, okay. Next problem. Okay, there's just four problems. One more. Okay, tree shaking. So I want to remove dead code, code which is not referenced uh, during my build or minification process. So let's say you have an action being imported from your component, action imported in your component, and you know uh, your component. You modify your component. You know, let's say you don't need uh, that action anymore, and you remove the import statement. So what uh, you can config webpack in such a way that you know it will remove unused X imports and uh, you know your action will automatically be removed from your chunk <laughs> but your reducer which is a long list of switch cases uh, does not let's say you know you are no longer using you are no longer dispatching drama action but it's very difficult for you know webpack or uh, uglyfy or any other bundler that you are using to you know remove this you know five lines of code so tree shaking is difficult in this my fourth problem is that i want to chunk my reducer across route specific bundles so this is pinterest chunk chunks uh, this is uh, from a slide from chrome dev summit uh, uh, from Addy Osmani's talk, where he describes uh, Pinterest uh, bundle uh, size budgets. So, you know, this is their budget. So, their vendor is a vendor and entry get loaded on every page, while <coughs> async is basically route specific chunks which get loaded only on a particular route. So, they are, their Redux store is present in the entry chunk and Possibly even there, all of their reducers are present in this chunk. What I want is that I want to move that to the async chunks, which is in this, uh, you know, route specific reducer code. Uh, so, one example that you can use is that you can use store.replace reducer, uh, which, you know, you can, uh, what happens is that what you can do is that you can create a reducer for each. Uh, route specific component and you know you can and, and, and every route change what you can do is that you can you can call replace reducer to replace you know use the new reducer which is now uh, available in this new route but what also you need to you know write a global reducer global reducer is for uh, handling actions which are globally like you know login or you know csrf etc so for those things you have to you know implement a merge reducer function to you know merge both uh, your route specific reducer and your global reducer but and how to go about with this you know each chunk will define your reducer and with, uh, so each each route specific chunk along with defining uh, what component needs to be rendered it will also define its reducer so and before that component is rendered we will call store.replace reducer so what are the problems with this approach? It is difficult to migrate if you have already implemented Redux and you are already using Redux. And another <coughs> is that you know it's very difficult to ensure that you know that the reducer will be uh, available when you are dispatching your action. So we actually uh, after we uh, launched our uh, revamped our mobile PWA at housing. Uh, when we wanted to implement React in our desktop website, what happened was that we found this pain, this to be a pain point. Our uh, so yeah, so this was a pain point at that time, and we realized this. We thought that you know now that we are starting in a new code base, we will make sure that you know we use this uh, you know store dot replace reducer, and we had these problems. So what's the solution? What's the thing that I've been trying to build up since the last 15 minutes? Well, why not dispatch your reducer? Wait for So, 
instead of you know dispatching a type a string what you do is that you dispatch a function which is from your which is defined in your you know, let's say in your reducers so and similarly this is your reducer function which you have exported which takes in state and payload and you know does whatever it needs to modify to your state so kind of like you know uh, how Manjula mentioned that you know you can you know use state state you can instead of passing objects you pass functions so similarly in your actions instead of passing a type string you pass in a function so but you know does this fix my problem so let's go ahead with my problems number one typos because I am importing them from a different file webpack will, will fail if I make a typo so problem number one solved uh, also, I don't need to maintain in three places because now I am maintaining only in two places that is in my reducer and in my actions file. My second problem was types. So, I define my types in this such a way. So, my reducer of generic type P takes in, uh, you know, it, first argument is state, second argument is a payload which is of that generic type P and it returns a state. My action of generic type P, it takes in a reducer of generic type P and the payload also needs to match that same generic type P uh, and then my dispatch is a generic function which takes in an action of type T so again I should have made P over here but the P stands for payload uh, so and types for my reducer basically it just I just have to mention you know what is the type for my payload over here and I don't need to while consuming anyways I would mention types uh, in my reducer so I will, I just need to maintain it in just one place, I don't need to maintain my types in another action types file and in my action I just mentioned that my dispatch is of type dispatch and it will do all of the uh, checks for me like you know increment counter requires the payload to be of type number and you know if I make a problem like you know increment counter I pass in a string it will throw, flow will throw an error that you know the reducer it's it takes a payload of type number but your payload is of type string this is a mistake and you know it will point the mistake to me over here in my action itself uh, my third problem was tree shaking unused reducer code so uh, my component required my action while my entry chunk my store required my uh, uh, yeah, so my component required my action. Now, if that action is no longer needed, uh, it would automatically get, uh, you know, tree shaken from my bundle. So now my reducer is also required in my action. So if, when that action is tree shaken, similarly my reducer will also get tree shaken. <coughs> so now I am eliminating dead code. Uh, and in large code bases, this really helps. You know, you create basically you create a component and you create it, it actions and reducers it's a generic component now its usage might not use all of the uh, you know um, you know extensibility that you have provided in your component it might use just a small portion of it so you know uh, any route specific places where you know it does not require all of the actions and all of the reducers it will automatically get eliminated in your bundle next up uh, also, so how to config your webpack such that it eliminates uh, dead code. Uh, it eliminates dead code. Uh, you should see can see dot example for webpack tree shaking exports. Uh, he explains it really nicely how you should you know tune your webpack config. So my fourth problem was I wanted to code split my reducers across my chunks. So uh, across my route specific chunk. So this was what it was before. Before my entry level, uh, this is basically it is lazy loaded. This is directly loaded. So present in the entry bundle. So my entry required my store. My store required my reducers and my middlewares, and my component required my actions. Now basically my reducers have moved from my entry chunk. They have moved to my component chunk. So problem. I am now no longer loading all of my reducers for every page of my website. Uh, so how do I get this to work? Again, so I mentioned the recipe earlier. You create enhancers and middleware. So over here in this case, <coughs> case I'll you know just create a middleware. What it does, it intercepts 
uh, if the action is of type object and the reducer is of type function, what I do is that I read the name of that function and just set it to type. So why this is needed? This is needed for Redux DevTools and for Redux itself also needs the type key on, uh, to be present on the action object. And uh, so we are we don't we no longer also need to maintain the type along with the reducer in our action. Similarly, uh, what about the reducer that we you know we had to pass to the field? So we just create a dummy reducer. What it does is, is action dot reducer is present. We will uh, call action dot reducer with the state and action dot payload, and it will return the new state, whatever you know uh, reduction that it needs to make. How to use with Redux DevTools? So it's simple. You just attach this middleware. That middleware adds the type key. So you know you can use it with Redux DevTools. So here's an example. Basically, I'm you know trying to skip that particular decrement counter action, and you know it's working. Uh, so one problem is that you know how do I use this with combined reducers? Um, I have left that as an exercise to the reader of this pull request and you know check it out uh, one more problem that you know people will face is you need uh, combined reducers if you are using something like react router or redux router because it uses it it provides the you know router on the uh, it provides the reducer on the router key so you will need to handle your you will need to modify your redu reducer in such a way that you know if you know action dot reducer is not present and it's a uh, you know it might be an action relate uh, uh, dispatched by react router so you will need to you know extend your state for that particular key over here so you will need to you might need to implement combined reducers over here in your reducer function uh, but I can I'm pretty sure you guys can go ahead with it uh, so a simple code mode for migration uh, uh, it's really difficult to explain the code mode over here so again uh, anyone who is interested uh, this code mode is for you know migrating your reducer from the previous uh, you know if you're using an object with key value pairs <laughs> on your uh, reducers it will migrate that to you know individual export statements uh, as reducers so what are the key takeaways that I would like you to have after this talk. One is that you know you can write your own enhancer for your problems related to your own needs if you feel that you know uh, it's difficult to maintain async code in your actions you know you can write go ahead write your own act, uh, enhancer for it. Also you can learn how to write code mods for migrations uh, and that's it. These slides are again available over here at bit.ly slash redux cd. Um, yeah, any of the code links that you want, you can easily get them from here. <coughs> if you have any doubts, you can if you can ask them right now or you can contact me later. And I will provide probably a code mod as a blog post on my medium as well. That's it. Any questions? <coughs>